Hello and welcome to Tim's BMW Repairs and Information. Well in the last episode I was fiddling about with my wife's Mini and today I'm fiddling about with my daughter's 118 which is a 2 litre M Sport 1 Series E81 and it's taking forever to get it going up to 8 cranks yesterday it really doesn't want to go but once it's going it goes like a rocket so I tried to run Imper on it that failed so today I'm using Carly and uh, which is quite a useful little app I'll tell you a bit more about it later on anyway Carly tells you that the whole world's ending basically if you diagnose a car and puts red flags up everywhere but I cleared the error codes for the engine and the only one that came back was one for the low pressure fuel sensor and looking on the web that seems to be attributed to long cranks so I'm going to replace it which uh, shouldn't be too much of a problem at all. I've had all of this off before while I've been servicing it. But uh, here we go. There's uh, six M8 coarse threaded bolts to hold the microfilter housing in. That's the housing I'm taking off there. Holds two microfilters, or is it one big long one? I can't remember. But if you want to change your microfilter, that has to come off. Yep, so six uh, coarse threaded bolts. Um, only need a screwdriver type socket don't need a wrench on or anything on those and don't tighten them up too much when it all goes back together otherwise you'll strip the threads it's only going into plastic and sheet metal if I remember rightly so yep yeah, that's the microfilter unit off and we get the usual leaves and stuff in there same as I do in my six series off with the weatherproof strip and then we just got to get these plastic covers off one for the e-box one for the brake stuff and there's a clip each side of it and a rubber sort of it, bit that goes at the end of it. Never quite sure what those things do, but you push them off the end and uh, you can get the covers off. So, yeah, both covers off. And, uh, yeah, then we move on to the tray itself, which is held on by two fine-threaded M8 bolts, uh, so don't get them muddled up with the other six. Otherwise, you could uh, come a cropper quite easy. So, yeah, two of those off. And before we pull the tray off, we have to get the sensor wiring off. Um, that's if I remember, because I, I've done this before and tried to pull it off with all the wires still on there. We need to get to a big Torx bolt underneath there, so I might as well take that cover off there, which is a screwdriver type fitting, just turn it a few degrees anti-clockwise. Um, there's these carriers for the pipe works, which goes between the left and right sides of the motor two of them so just they unclip from the tray and oh yeah it looks like I remember this time so pull off the connector from the sensor and there's two little clip things which hold them in place so yeah pull that off small screwdriver poke it between the sheet metal and the clip and they'll pop out quite happily and once you've done that just sort of dangle it off over the side of the car and then do to the same to the other so disconnect um, two clippy things. Uh, I'm trying to be brave and pull it off without a screwdriver. I should have used a screwdriver. We are coming back with an even bigger one this time. Look at that, not messing about today. Should have used the little one, really. It's a lot easier. And now the tray can come off. Sometimes it needs a bit of a pull because it gets stuck to the rubbery bit behind. Um, but it came off without any problem this time. Then two big Torx bolts. They're um, male Torx. They need a female socket for them. Uh, quite a small one here, doesn't take much effort to get that one off. The one in the middle is a bit harder, so I'm using an extension, well, a part of a microphone stand, if I remember correctly, on my wrench. And it's much easier using a long extension, because you don't have to put so much effort into it. You can just sort of lean against it and it'll undo. So those are done up pretty tight, so you need a bit of effort to undo them. And uh, once that Torx bolts out, it'll whiz it out. Once it's come loose, whiz it out with the socket. And then you can get that uh, strut off. Um, just needs to be pulled out. And when it goes back in, it goes sort of through a rubbery hole. And it's a bit difficult to line up, but uh, no problem at all, really. So there we go. The big Torx is out. Uh, that one needed a bit of effort, and then that can come out as well. And that now gives us access to get the engine cover off oh, it's a huge amount of palaver just to get to the engine cover but there you go and then we've got three lots of allen bolts um that hold the engine cover off on and uh, to the front 
one at the back and whizzing them off now I'll just sped up the film a bit but there you go and then you take the uh, oil cap off and then you can get the cover off so cover off oh look I'm doing it again from a different angle uh, still smoking away because it's only just got here so cover off and of course immediately put the oil cap back on again and due to editing I seem to be putting it on twice but there we go that's editing for you righty oh well we can get there now so let's have a look at the high pressure system there's the whole system manifold to the right here's the high pressure pump mechanical runs off a lobe on the camshaft low pressure sensor is the brass looking thing that's what we're going to get out and above it to the left is the high pressure sensor and to the right a quick release pipe which goes to the fuel tank so that's the low pressure fuel coming in and which is pumped up by a fuel pump which is in the tank and the additional one is for the high pressure rail uh, because this has high pressure injection so right i'm going to get the sensor off so i poke a little screwdriver in the tab of the connector and that releases it and then i can just pull it on the cable and out it will pop a lot easier if you've got not got a camera in your left hand but there you go that's out and i've failed to find the right size spanner for this so i'm using an adjustable desirable thing to do i've got a rag underneath it because there's going to be fuel coming out not a great deal but be careful or this may well happen to you there we go showered with petrol it's not much coming out but it's a bit of a shock all the same and of course i've got a fire extinguisher to hand always do when you're working with a petrol system especially when when the engine's still hot as it is at uh, today so yeah once you let the pressure out and uh, get the rag out of the way and then just unscrew the sensor it isn't tight in position it's a brass fitting so you can't put too much pressure on it it'll break something and um, so yeah cloth out of the way no more petrols coming out the pressure's all gone and that's the low pressure side as well i mean if you talk about the high pressure side quite a lot comes out of that and i'll do another episode where i take the high pressure sensor off and that takes a bit more messing about to be honest right new sensor in all oh, i'm zooming in and uh yeah new brass sensor in and i'll have to do it up with the same awful adjustable spanner but uh there you go these things happen sometimes yep so it's just a matter of tightening up uh, that fuel pressure sensor refitting the connector and that's about it really i mean it's just so easy the, the most of the time is spend taking off all the covers and so on but right okay we've done it all uh, we'll go back to seeing if it helped right for diagnostics today we're using carly instead of impa and that's because impa failed to connect to the car two different leads and two different versions of the software so i'm giving carly a go and first time i've used it in anger it's a smart little device it's a small unit that plugs into the diagnostics uh, port you switch it on self-powered by a diagnostic port pair it to your phone run the carly app carly isn't free by the way um there's a uh, 50 pounds per year probably about 80 dollars per year subscription um but it is quite useful but it isn't in per and what you do is you, do, you run a sort of health check which checks everything in the car and comes back with a million error codes and tells you your car's going to disintegrate. And, uh, but don't, take no notice of it. It's quite normal to have lots of error codes in a car that hasn't had diagnostics on it for a while and this one hasn't. So we're interested in the engine. I clear all the engine error codes and the fuel pressure sensor one comes back immediately. Um, doesn't tell you which one it was so I used the error code to find out if it's the high or the low pressure sensor and it's the low pressure sensor so that's how we got to this point point. Um, and today what I've done is we've done the work I've run Carly again cleared the engine error code and then started the engine and run Carly again and we get no error codes at all from the engine so obviously changing that fuel pressure sensor uh, did the trick whether it helps the car start the next morning i don't know yet and i'll put down in the description uh, whether it did work or not but now it's time to put the whole car back together well today is tomorrow and i got a text from my daughter this morning 
and the car started first time and it started first time on the way back from work so I'm really pleased and I like the way that Carly helped me fix this and the web and checking on the forums to see if the low pressure sensor could be a cause of long cranking and uh, the outcome was great uh, so yeah we seem to have missed a bit while I was being blabbing along so yep we just need to undo the oil cap push the cover into place uh, refit the, uh, the oil cap immediately and then replace the three allen bolts and that's the engine cover back into position of course between that and this of course I ran the car um, well I ran it during diagnostics and made absolutely sure I didn't have any fuel leaks because that'd be pretty awful so here I am putting the strut back in position and I recommend putting the outer allen bolt in uh, torx bolt in first um, so I'm just putting this one to put keep the strut in position uh, because if you do this one first which I did on another occasion then the outer one can move off a bit and you can't get the outer torques back in so I'm just doing that up loosely and then I'll do the outer torques next because it has to fit on a land around the bolt hole uh, you'll see what I mean when you do it it has to click into position and uh, if you do the middle one up first and then there's always a possibility to move out of the way so put a, a fair heave on that not a great deal don't need an extension definitely do need an extension on this one to tighten it up I mean it's not a safety part but it doesn't actually do anything unless all the bolts are really tight um, because it's meant to stop movement between the uh, the suspension and uh, the rest of the chassis so yeah long extension yep yeah, it's my microphone stand again give it a good heave and then put the cover back on screwdriver fitting few degrees clockwise and that's back in position again lovely right what next oh yes it's a tray now this is a bit fiddly um <laughs> i've uh, cut down the editing a bit because I, I swore a bit it takes a bit of fiddling around to sort of push it in and click it into position so i'm going making a heave and i've probably cut out five minutes of it as well it has to clip into the rubbery bit at the back and you can hit it as much as you like but it's just a case of getting it in the right position so I'm going to refit the uh, over engine pipe work again and they fit into little slots as you can see here uh, if my head wasn't in the way it'd be a lot easier um, yep so those those two in and uh, and then I'm pushing the tray a bit to the left because the the screw holes didn't line up on the left and the right so I managed to shove it, shove it along a bit and now those 8mm fine threaded bolts, not the coarse ones, go in here and still using a screwdriver type attachment because that's all it needs and now I'm putting back the sensors so I reconnect the sensor and then clip the little doofers back over the sheet metal there we go, push that sensor in and uh, probably do the other one Yep, off we go. So, yeah, plug it back in and put the uh, little clips back over the sheet metal and keep it all nice and neat. And then fit the other 8mm fine threaded bolt. There we go. That's done up. Lovely. And, uh, oh, no, I seem to have done it in the wrong order, but there you go. Um, yep, I'm refitting that uh, sensor now. I'm quite sure what I was doing down there before, but there you go. There we go. Reconnecting lovely that's in position and uh, then the stupid covers on well it's stupid because of the the leaf catchers which are to the left and right I never seem to get the rubbery bit into the slot on this side for some reason and I've tried lots of times to get it in the right place and it never seems to go in so I just sort of make a a small effort of getting it in there we go that's clicked into place and then we do the same for the right hand box and uh, just fit that into place and I can seem to get the rubbery bit, the leaf catcher thingy, into the slot on this one, whereas I can't on the left-hand one. Make sure the wires aren't being trapped, of course, and just push it into place. A couple of shoves and that'll go in. That's it. Perfect. And then it's a case of refitting the uh, weather strip. Um, and don't do what I did here, which was I fitted it and then hadn't got it pushed fully to the left. So the trick is to actually start from the left 
and you say oh no it's not working i'm pushing as much as i can oh, will it go no i have to start again so there we go and then push it just so that that floppy bit of rubber goes over the top of the weather strip and then it will fit on properly and do the rubbery bit on the right hand side as well there we go it seemed to have got that in position happy with that and then we refit the microfilter housing you might as well have changed the microfilter while you're doing it because they're cheap as muck and it's so easy to do once it's off so we got another six coarse threaded eight millimeter bolts um, using a screwdriver type attachment rather than the wrench because you don't want to do them up too tight it's only sheet plastic or sheet metal i can't remember which anyway that's about it really um yeah very pleased with this fix and quite happy with carly as well which you sort of came into the fore when impa gave up and was managed to diagnose the fault so yeah very pleased with that and thanks very much for watching thanks for subscribing thanks for all the comments i always try and answer them when possible and i'll see you next time